Today we're going to learn about templating in Spring Boot and in particular about the Timeleaf template engine. And to, uh, to introduce that, we're going to revisit the Hello Spring, uh, the Hello World-like example we did in Spring Boot last time. All right, so um, I don't actually have this project in my workspace. I actually removed it. Uh, and the reason I did that is so I could show you uh, one way to get it from um, from GitHub if you wanted to play around with this on your own. So let's see, where where are we? Hello, Spring, there we go. So this is just on the Launch Code Education um, GitHub organization. There's a project called Hello Spring. This is also linked uh, in previous walkthroughs and I'll link to it in uh, the, uh, the, the comments and uh, the description rather and um, the course website as well. All right, so I'm gonna come here and get the clone URL and um, one way that you can do this is you can actually use Git and GitHub directly from the command line, even though you're using Eclipse as well. And I find that a little bit easier sometimes, especially when setting up new projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that now. Um, so I'm gonna go to the directory where I wanna store my code, and then I'm gonna clone the project. All right, so that cloned the Hello Spring project into that directory. It's not an Eclipse yet though, so I'll import it now. And this way, when, you're, when you've already cloned everything to disk, you can just import it from uh, under the general tab, projects from folder or archive, like we've done a couple of times already. Let's see, all right, that's, that's the right one. And it'll pull it in. So recall that Hello Spring was the project we created in the last walkthrough. It is a Spring Boot application. In other words, it is a Spring um, MVC web application that uses the special package Spring Boot to um, allow us to create Spring applications quicker and more simply. It also uses Maven to, manages, to manage the various dependencies. So let's open up the POM file. Recall that the POM file specifies the external dependencies of our project. And if you go to the Dependencies tab, you can see that there are basically um, two main dependencies there, Spring Boot Starter Web and Spring Boot Starter Test that's used for uh, unit testing. So the first thing we want to do in order to use templates within our project is we're going to need to add Timeleaf as a dependency. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can come in here and you can just edit the XML to add the dependency, you can also come here and uh, add it through this dependencies tab. Let's do let's do this one. So I'm going to hit add. And in order to do this, I need to know the group ID and the artifact ID. So to get that, I'm just going to go to the web. I'm going to search for Timeleaf Maven Spring Boot. Okay. And uh, anything at this URL here, Maven Repository, MVN Repository.com. These results are usually the actual um, official repository info for a given project. So that, that kind of search term of just Spring Boot Maven and then the name of the, the package you're looking for is usually a good way to find the Maven repository information. All right, so we have here at the top here, um, this is going to be the group and this is going to be the artifact. So org.springframework.boot. Um, I'll actually just copy that. And then the artifact is Spring Boot Starter Timeleaf. All right, so I'll add that and save. And if you look, once I save, notice that down here at the bottom right, Eclipse is going to do some work to go pull in that new dependency from the web and uh, rebuild my project. If I go over to the pom.xml tab, I see that this uh, dependency was automatically set up for me. So if you uh, are comfortable editing XML, you can go ahead and, and do it that way as well. Um, but there's multiple options here for you with Eclipse. Okay, so now we have the Timeleaf dependency in here. Uh, I need a place to store my templates. In Spring Boot, um, normally we would have to do a, quite a, a bit of setup to get Timeleaf running within a, just a normal Spring MVC application. But Spring Boot allows us to get running more quickly by making some of the configuration decisions for us. In particular, it tells us that Spring Boot by convention um, we'll look for templates in a certain folder. So if I'm here at source main resources, 
this folder within my project. If I have a folder here named templates, Spring Boot will automatically look for templates in that directory. So I can just go ahead and create that directory as it is. All right. And so let me go ahead and uh, before we get going any farther, let me, let's remind ourselves of what this application does. Okay, so I'm going to come down here into the Hello Spring application file and run it to start up my server. And I'm just looking here to make sure that the server starts properly without any exceptions. And it looks like we have an exception there. Let's see what it is. Oh, it looks like I'm already actually running a server. Um, give me one second and I'll figure this out. Okay, so I got that figured out. Basically, um, I, I managed to get my uh, laptop in a weird state where I had uh, multiple um, Spring Boot Tomcat servers running. And uh, so I just killed the other one and now we're ready to go. So let me go ahead and um, give this a second shot. We'll restart our Hello Spring application. And this time I do get a successful uh, startup message. All right, so the only um, URL we have set up within our application is slash hello. Okay, and if we go to just slash hello, that displays hello world. If we give it a query parameter, somebody's name, for instance, we have to have the name equals, it will say hello to that person. So let's look at the code really quickly to remind ourselves of how that worked. Within the controllers, I have a hello controller. And if we look at that code, we can see that um, we have a single method within the controller and it's set up with the request mapping annotation to handle requests to slash hello. It only handles get requests. And uh, what it does is if it finds, it first looks for a, a request parameter called name. If that parameter does not exist in the request, then it sets name equal to world. It builds up a message by calling hello.getMessage. Um, and then returns just a simple single string of HTML, okay? So, uh, and then, then, yeah, this so this hello message, this was uh, the one model class that we created last time. So today what we wanna do is use templates to extend this functionality a little bit and make our hello world application just a little bit more sophisticated. In particular, I wanna make sure that there's no HTML anywhere within my controllers, okay? Anything that's dictating display should be within the view part of the application and uh, the view just is another word for our templates. Okay, so let's see. The first thing I want to do is create a template and show you how to use a template that will um, basically put this message out in a template rather than within the controller. Okay, so I'm going to go to templates and I'm going to create a new file. Let's see, new um, file. And I'm going to call it uh, hello.html. And so our time leaf templates are what are called natural templates. I'll, I'll um, explain that a little bit more later on once we actually have one built. But basically, it means that one of the one of the things that it means is that our time our templates don't have a special file extension. They just have a, just a plain HTML file extension. So recall that think when you're thinking about time leaf in the context of Spring MVC, think about the Jinja two templates that we used in Unit two when we built our Python applications, and you'll find a lot of uh, parallels. Okay. So here's my template file. When you do this within Eclipse for the first time, you're going to see something a little bit different. In particular, Eclipse is going to most likely try to display this file to you in an embedded web browser. So it'll look something like, um, like this. It'll try to give you this little embedded web browser within Eclipse and display that. The way to fix that is to install the Timeleaf plugin in Eclipse. So if you just go Timeleaf, Eclipse plugin. The first URL you get there is the URL of the update site. So these are the instructions telling you how to install it, but basically you copy this URL, you go back to Eclipse, and from the help menu, you select install new software. And then you can add that repository as a site, and then go through this whole dialogue to uh, 
to install the Timely plugin. And uh, I already have that installed, so I'm not going to go through that. But that will basically let you open up HTML files and get syntax highlighting as if they were Timely files by default. OK? Great. So the basic function of templates, remember, is to dictate the display of our various views. And we want to also be able to insert data into them dynamically. OK, so they're not just static HTML files, but they'll interact with our controller files in order to uh, be dynamic and to display data based on the specific request we're dealing with. For the most part, though, they're just going to look like HTML files. So let me go ahead and set up just a few pieces of um, important HTML. So I have doc type. Um, I have my HTML tags. Um, I'm going to have my head tags. And I'm, in this one, I'm not really going to like. Well, let me create a title on my, my head. Um, just the title of our application. This will be displayed on the title bar of your browser. And then I create a body. OK, and so within the body, for this particular page, we're basically trying to replace the functionality of this here, where we have just a message wrapped in h1 tags. OK, so here I'm going to need h1 tags. OK, and uh, before I get to um, looking at how we actually get that data into our templates and actually render the templates, there's one more piece I need to do here. So um, this is kind of new, so I'll just kind of um, uh, drop it out there. Let me make sure I get this right. There's a little uh, there's a little attribute we need to add to the HTML tag here, and um, I usually just have to look this up. So let me go to another project where I've already done this, and there we go. So I need to add that piece. Essentially, I have this XML and S colon th equals, um, and then the URL of the Timely website. Um, Kind of a technical reason why you might need to use this. I'm not going to go into it, but basically this helps. Uh, this has to do with you know Timeleaf and its various plugins and extensions and things like that. Um, we're not going to be that concerned with it in this in this point in time, but uh, y you know it's a good thing to do if your application gets more um, complex and you start using um, different Timeleaf packages. You might need this, and then additionally, if you're working on an application at an employer, you're definitely going to have different uh, namespaces. This is XMLNS. Is a, is a is an attribute that stands for XML namespace. Okay, so just a good habit to get into. Similar to putting the doc type at the top of our, all of our HTML files, um, we want to get into the good habit of including the XMLNS attribute on our HTML tags and all of our templates, and all of our timely templates at least. Okay, so we have that technicality out of the way. Um, all right, so now we want to get our hello world message into our template. OK, so the first thing I need to do is I need to basically provide a mechanism for my controller method to pass data to the template. OK, for that, I'm going to need to add a method attribute up here, an input attribute. So there is a special class within Spring called model. Um, and you know this isn't necessarily a model in the sense of the models will build for application. Um, but it's a it's an object and a class that uh, helps our um, different components of our application talk to one another. So in this in this case, I can add that attribute after my um, servlet request attribute, and then I'll have access to this guy. And Spring will kind of when it calls my hello method, it will populate that second parameter with um, a model object. And the reason I like that, and the reason I want it, is I can actually use the model to do the following. I can say model dot add attribute and I can tell it that I want to pass in an attribute called name into my template and then I want its value to be uh, that of the name variable okay so the name variable is what we got out of our parameter our request and I can pass that in um, that way okay so that will actually pass that, that, that property into our template, similar to what we saw with Jinja templates in unit two. OK, the last thing I have to do here, well, not quite the last thing. The next to last thing is I need to tell Spring which template to render when it's done with this method. Instead of returning just a string of HTML to the user, which gave us this, I want to tell Spring to uh, use a specific template. All I have to do for that is to uh, 
basically, well, let me, you know what? I want to actually put this here. So let me, I realize that I need more than just the name for my attribute. I need, I need this thing to be the full message. So let me call this message and let me call my um, model static method get message to determine what that message should be because we need to pass the entire message not just the name Jesse but the entire hello and we get that from that uh, static print that static method on the hello message model object model class rather okay so back to what we were doing we need to tell spring which template needs to be rendered okay so I'm going to get rid of that HTML and all I do here in order to tell it which template to render is just pass the name of the template. In this case, it's hello. And in general, this is going to be just the name of the HTML file without the extension. Okay. Um, one other caveat is if there were, you know, I can have folders in, uh, in here. I can have like a, a folder within the templates folder. And if so, I would say, you know, uh, something like if I had a message.html file within the, within the uh, uh, you know, it would look like this. So it would look like folder slash hello if my hello template was inside of a folder named folder up here. Um, we'll make that more explicit if we ever use folders, but just a quick, just that was just a quick note on the syntax there. If all of your templates are just at the top level, you can just take off the HTML extension and that's the name of your template and Spring will get that correct. One last thing before I can give this a shot, um, well two last things, one last thing in the controller file at least, is I need to get rid of this request response body annotation. This annotation was what allowed me to just return a string rather than getting passed through a template. Now that I have templates set up and I want to use them, I need to get rid of that. And um, that will allow me to then use the template rather than just pass the response back directly in the string. Okay, and so we're done with the controller file here. Now I need to go back over to my template file and I need to tell the template where to put um, this attribute. I have this attribute called message that's going to be passed in, but I'm not using it anywhere here yet. Okay, so I want it to go basically right here within the HTML tags, or within the H1 tags within my HTML. And the way I do that is I actually go into the front tag. Okay, and here I'm going to use a special syntax that's new. I'm going to say th colon text equals, and then I'm going to put a string there, and I'm going to say um, that I want it to insert my message. Okay. Um, I'll, there, there's some complicated uh, variations of this and lots of different types of uh, different ways you can use syntax to insert things within a template in Timeleaf. I'll link to some documentation and we'll kind of introduce small pieces as we go. This is the most basic. So this just says take the parameter that was passed in called message, think of this as a variable within your template. It's something that has to be set by model.add attribute. These names, this name here and this name here have to match up. And then the dollar sign curly brace basically say insert the value of that variable. th colon text says uh, it's, it's paired with the h1 tag. It's in the opening, um, opening tag of the h1 element. It says insert this message into the tag if it exists, if it's not null, okay? One thing you can do here is you can provide a default message, um, you know, like this, hello world, you can provide a default message within your tag, and if this thing comes in and happens to be null, we've already kind of dealt with that scenario over here, all right? So we're not gonna have that happen, but if, you know, if it was possible for that to happen within your application, then you can provide a default value within the element itself and that, if this, if this happened to be null, Timeleaf would just leave this one here and not worry about uh, this. However, if message is not null, it will replace the, the message within that tag to be the actual value of the string. Okay, so in this, time, in this case, we're, just, we're not going to need that default value because we've already handled the null case back in the controller. Okay, so I think we're good. Let me go ahead and stop the server and restart it since we made a bunch of changes. All right, that seems to have worked. Let's go back here and let me just go to hello first. It says hello world. 
So, you know, recall that we just replaced func we replaced uh, the, the guts of how this functionality worked. We didn't change any functionality. So we really shouldn't see anything significant change here. Notice I did get a little bit more spacing up here. That's just because I'm actually using proper HTML rather than just the plain H1 elements. And then let's try a parameter. And there we go. So it works uh, as advertised, just as we wanted. But now we have our display stuff all separated out into a view. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, one more piece within this walkthrough. Let's. Uh, I want to add a new piece of functionality, which is to say that I want to be able to have a form where instead of like someone having to come up here and write in this URL by hand, I would want somebody to be able to type in, say, the name Jesse within the form, and then get this method, then have this message displayed to them. Okay, so um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a second template with the form and uh, wire that up to be handled correctly. So to do that, I basically want this. This is uh, uh, all functionality that's going to display the message. Okay, so um, I really want, if I'm going to set up a form, I'm going to have that ideally be dealt with as a post request instead of a get request. So let me change the request me me message, uh, request method, and a little tongue tied there, the request method to post on this um, on this controller method. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and set up a controller method to display the form. Okay. So we need public string hello form. And uh, all I want it to do is to display a template. I don't want it to, it, you know, it's not going to have any logic or anything complicated. So all I need to do is return a template. Okay, so I haven't made this form yet, or this template, but I will. So I'm going to call it hello form. And then I need to configure this using the request mapping annotation. And I'm actually going to set this one up to be on the same request path slash hello but it's going to deal with a get request so a get request to slash hello will display the form a post request will try to process the form okay now I need to actually create this form so let's go to our templates directory and create a new file called hello form.html I come over here and grab a bunch of stuff from this it's going to be mostly the same uh, the body is going to be different though, so let me get rid of that. Um, and there are ways to kind of share code within your templates, kind of like we had a header and a footer sub-template or template chunks within Jinja. We can do that within Timely. We're not going to do that in this walkthrough since we're just getting started, but you'll see that um, at least in the final problem set, uh, the spring uh, stock problem set, um, if not sooner. Okay, so within the body, I want to display a form here. So let me create a form. It needs to have a single input for someone to type in their name. So we have probably haven't uh, you probably haven't written a form in a while, so it might be useful to go back and refresh form syntax from unit two. Um, recall that for every input element for a form, I need to give it a type and a name to tell it what type of data that form element should take in and what the name of it should be. And in this case, name is going to be name. That's because it represents a person's name. Um, let's see. I need to close my input tag, and I need to give it a button. And I want that button to be a submit button. Okay. Um, one more thing I need to do up here is tell my form how to submit. Now, uh, the form is going to be submitted to the same URL as the URL that displays it, right? So we have these controller methods set up. They're both at the same path. The difference is one handles a get request and one handles a post. Okay, so I need to set that the method equals post. Okay, we specify where the form should be submitted by saying action. Okay, and that will be the URL that the form is posted to. Um, in this case, I don't actually have to do this. The, the form, the URL that's going to handle the post is also the same URL that displays the form. So I could leave that off if I wanted to, um, which I think I will in this case. And there we go. And let me just add a little default, little message on the button. Um, 
Okay, great. Uh, I think we're pretty good there. So let's go ahead and restart our application. Um, one thing I want to do real quick before we get, uh, before I restart this out is I want to show you a little trick that can help prevent you from having to restart so often. So within our source main resources directory, there's an application.properties file. Uh, this is a place where you can put settings for your Spring applications and um, Spring Boot applications rather. So here I'm going to set, there's a setting I can specify called spring.timeleaf.cache um, and I can set that equal to be false. And what this will do is this will enable something called hot swapping. Okay, so when I start up my Spring server, that's a Java server, and it's running as a process and can, can handle requests. If I change Java classes, um, if I modify the code, I have to restart that server normally. However, with templates, I can swap out templates while the server is still running, um, so I don't have to restart if I only change a template by setting this cache to be false. Okay. And so you wouldn't want to do this in a real-world production application if you were running this, you know, and it was available publicly because it would slow down your application. In this case, though, it's going to be pretty safe. Um, we're just working locally. This will prevent us from having to do as many restarts. I'm still going to have to restart the server if I change a Java class, but if I just change a template, uh, if I just changed, you know, a little bit of wording in the template, um, this setting will prevent me from having to totally restart the server just from a template change. Okay? So let me... Go ahead and restart the server because I did actually change a bunch of stuff. And then we'll start it again. All right, let's go over here. All right, so now when I go to slash hello the first time, this is just a get request. And since my controller is configured to handle get requests by just displaying the form by passing through to the hello form template, I just get this template display. This is the exact template that we just created right here. Okay, so let me just go ahead and type in a name and hit the button. And when I hit the button, that makes a post request because I've specified that the, the submission method is post. So that means that when that request gets posted, it comes in and hits this controller the hello controller because it's configured to handle post requests and uh, it will um, handle this request and go ahead and look for the, the name parameter and go ahead and display the, the correct message as we were doing previously. Okay. Um, one little thing, last thing I want to show you is it's possible for me in this case to actually get rid of this functionality. Uh, the message, the get message functionality, recall the get message is, uh, let's see, let's just look at what it does. It just builds up the string that says hello, whatever. I can put, actually put this, if I wanted to, I could put this functionality within the template, okay? Um, and so whether or not you should do so is going to kind of depend more specifically on what your application is doing and the best place for that logic to go. But I just want to kind of do this to illustrate how this would work. Let me go over and in this, um, template, I want to modify this so this is where that message is actually displayed. So I can do something like this. I can kind of use string concatenation in here the same way I normally would within a Java file. And I use single quotes in there to delimit my strings because the double quotes are used to surround the whole text equals chunk. Okay. And here, rather than being a message, this is just going to be a name at this point. So let me change the parameter of this, the name of this parameter. So it's just name, because it's just going to be the person's name. And then in my controller, I need to change this. So that's passing in an attribute name called name, which is what my uh, template expects. And then rather than going to get the message there, I can just pass through only the name. And so if it's, you know, say, if I just type in Zach, only the word Zach will get passed through here to the template. And then when it gets to the template, it will build up the rest of it within the template. Okay, so the whole point is you can do kind of some simple logic within here. You can do loops and things like that within your templates. All this stuff is a you know time leaf is is just a it's it's a set of syntax for doing um, more sophisticated stuff and inserting data within your templates in sophisticated ways. 
So other than just inserting a single variable in its value, you can do more complicated things, and that's going to be, um, we'll kind of introduce those as we go, but also feel free to dig into the documentation if you think there's something you want to do that you haven't learned yet. It's all kind of, um, you know, fairly easy to get through. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and see if that works now. So I changed my class file, I should, uh, so I need to restart my application. And again, this should um, not change the way this looks or behaves. It should just behave the exact same way as it did before. We've just rearranged the structure of our application to be more useful in this case. All right, there we go. And one thing, let, let's go back here and let's look at what happens if I just um, leave this empty. We haven't added really much validation here. Let's just go ahead and see what happens if this is empty. Okay, so this is something you probably want to test for when you're doing things like this, is what happens if someone doesn't submit a value? How does your application behave with uh, data, respect to data validation and things like that? In this case, the name is just left out. So we configured our application back here to supposedly, this comment says, get, get name parameter from request will be null if no parameter is passed in. That kind of seems like the situation here, right? I had a form, I just left it empty, and I hit the button to submit the form. So you would think that this would have been triggered, and it would have set the value of name to be equal to world, and we would have the phrase hello world. However, what happens in this case, rather than being null, what's passed in is the empty string. Okay, so this parameter is still submitted, but it's submitted as the empty string. So I just need to add another um, check here to make sure that name is not equal to the empty string. And um, let's go ahead and restart. All right. So now, now if I hit this um, while I uh, fail to provide an input parameter, it will provide that default value. So just, just kind of a, a reminder that, you know, the default values of things, whether or not they're empty strings or nulls or what have you, uh, will depend on the specific situation and you just kind of need to pay attention to those things. Okay, great. So for this, um, I'm going to say that, you know, that's that's all we're going to introduce for now. We'll get into some more complicated templating stuff as we go. That's the basics of templating. What, would, what did we learn? We learned how to add the time leaf dependency to our POM file in order to pull in the time leaf um, the time leaf dependency into Spring, so we could use time leaf templates. We learned that our templates go in source main resources within the templates directory, that they are simple HTML files that have syntax we can use provided by time leaf um, in a similar way that we had special syntax with our Jinja templates, although this is different than Jinja. And then we, we learned how to modify our uh, handlers and our controller to pass data back to templates into render templates using model.add attribute. We added the model parameter to our second controller, which dealt with form submissions and post requests, so that we could then add an attribute, pass that into our template, and our template then would have access to that and be able to display a dynamic message accordingly. All right, thanks for listening.